Hello everyone, Tactical Edge here. Today we are back to the battlefield where I was playing as the Norskins on the Nightcrew Clan recruitment tournament versus Lizardmen played by Zaxi. Zaxi here deploying the lethal combo of the Croxgores and Skinks using that spawnkin synergy to add more damage to the monstrous infantry. The Lizardman does have the tools to crush most front lines now, so we'll have to figure out something to deal with the Croxagor skink synergy. For the army builds, we are going with a sheer numbers approach in terms of front line. A ton of marauders, including the regular ones mixed in with three spears, just trying to use the bodies to slow down the Croxagor rush, while at the same time our marauder hunters with javelins will be dishing out the anti-large damage with their javelins. At the back there, even more anti-large damage with Skin Wolf's armored version. Their armor doesn't do much against the armor-piercing crossgoals and cold ones, but it does mitigate the blow dart damage from the Skink Skirmishers. For the magic support, we have a Shaman Sorcerer of Metal coming in with Searing Doom, Plague of Rust for that synergy with the non-armor-piercing anti-large damage, and of course, Final Transmutation in case we need to do some direct damage. Leading the army would be Throgged the Troll King, since he is the only character capable of healing on the Norskin roster. And we are expecting some Spirit Leech or Final Transmutation, which my opponent did bring a Metal Slan. Coming in with Searing Doom and Final Transmutation plus the usual abilities and items, he will be protected by a Star Chamber Guardians. For the front line there, we have a line of Skink Cohorts for the cheap chaff bodies, supported of course by Croxagors. Three of them, four of them, three of them in total, one of them the Court of Hortal. They are backed up by some Feral Coat ones and also a ton of Skink Skirmishers for their cost efficient blow dots. Last but not least, because the Lizardman didn't bring any healing spell, the Rev Crystal will be the sole source of healing for the Lizardman. That's it for the army builds and now let's get the battle started. As the battle begins, both sides are cautiously advancing, keeping their mobility at the side of their missile troops. The Javelins are protected by Skin Wolves, while the Skink Skirmishers are protected by Feral Cold Ones. So the Marauders and the Skink Cohorts will be eating the brunt of the first engagements, charging into each other while Javelins moving up to counteract the charge of the Court of Portal, an overcasted Plague of Rust upgraded version dropping their armor down to 40, so they need to pull back despite the protection of the shield of the old ones because they don't really want to eat all the anti-large damage. I did make a mistake of not switching off the default skirmishing mode on my new setup, so the Marauder Hunters because of the nearby enemy units actually try to pull back due to the skirmishing mode and missed out a lot of opportunity to continue shooting at the Court of Hortal. But now with the cohort of Hortal pulling back, while well, the rest of the um, Croxagors and Feral Coans charging through the front line, the Javelins are once again disrupted and I'll be throwing in some skin wolves trying to slow down the enemy advance. A massive final transmutation upgraded version they're hitting Frog and the Marauder infantry which is not too bad for me since Frog does have that regeneration unlike Wolfric and doesn't care about direct damage spells as much. While at the back there, Banishment going down the Hunters with Javelins and are doing some very, very good damage while Searing Doom dropping on top of my Marauder Spears. Still early in the game and the Slan is already doing a lot of damage. And because of the Bastilodon's presence, my Marauder Infantry are all getting terrified. At this point, most of my Marauder Infantry are on a mass exodus. The regular Marauders are breaking and the Spears here are also faltering in front of a combined might of the Skin Cohorts and Croxagors, while on the other side, these Marauders are barely holding. So that means all that's left for me to defend my front line are the Skin Wolves, who are taking quite a bit of losses in the middle of the Star Chamber Guardians. Although, these Skin Wolves are doing just fine fighting the Croxagors with some magic support. The Croxagors being debuffed by the Plague of Rust upgraded version down to 40 armor is eating a lot of damage from a combination of anti-large damage from the Skin Wolves and the Javelins nearby. So despite losing on the infantry department, the balance of power is still looking fairly even as I managed to score some wins against the Kowans and Croxagors. Croxagors were trying to push for my backline but was momentarily interrupted by Throg trying to intercept their advance. Now they're resuming their push while the Javelins will be throwing in some point flank shots trying to whittle down their health even further. Searing Doom whittling away the health of these Javelins, but they're turning around to shoot at the back of these Croxagors, doing some pretty nice damage overall. On the far side, the Skink Skirmishers are pulling back from the front lines. We are pretty much trading back lines here, as the Croxagors 
push for my javelins, but my skin wolves are pushing for the skin skirmishers. All the Koans have been defeated in their initial charge against my javelins, and now there is nothing left to protect the Lizardman backline. One of the skin wolves even managed to run down four units of various skinks and cold ones. With the help of the spear marauders nearby, the skin wolves should be able to completely chase off all of these routed Lizardman units. While over here, Skin Wolves continues to hold down the crossgoers with their mass and anti-large plus regeneration. This buys time for the Marauder Huntsmen to chuck in more point-blank shots at the Sacred Crossgoers, combining with the Armored Skin Wolves, using all the anti-large damage to quickly bring down the health of this expensive regiment of renown. And then Throg just comes in with a rear charge bashing their brains in, routing them off with a clean swing. In the back there, there are some marauders who have regrouped, although one of the javelins actually shattered, so I'm very disappointed about them. And the marauder spears who have returned will be falling victim to a bit of banishment. Now with the Court of Hortal on the run, the javelins are slightly less pressured and can try to retreat back to safety, while Frog and the Skin Wolves will attempt to run the Court of Hortal off to the white line. Though the Bastillodon still managed to rout off the Marauder Hunters with the Terror, and then the Star Chamber Guardians closing in. I'll keep my pressure on to the Court of Hortal there. As the um, Skin Wolves are being driven back by the Croxagores and Star Chamber Guardians, I need to make sure the Court of Hortal does not come back to reinforce the major Lizardman blob, so Throg will continue his chase against these routed Sacred Croxagores. As they are so very close to the white line, I can just keep them routing and as soon as one of their unit models hit the white line, they are officially off the map regardless of their flag. Then Thor can be freed up to help out his other units. Javelins continues to shoot some anti-large missiles against the Croxagores. These guys knows that they cannot outrun the Croxagores, so they are just standing firm, chugging out a few final shots as a last fuck you to the Croxagores, while their brethren are running back trying to get to safety while the Marauder's infantry are coming up to screen off the pursuit of the Star Chamber Guardians. Court of Hortal has been chased off the map by Throg, the Troll King, so no more sacred boxicles for the Lizardmen. As I am regrouping my Skin Wolves who are just chasing off Cold Ones and the Skin Skirmishers, just trying to use my mobility advantage to prevent any more support for the Lizardmen from returning. Let us do a bit of a fast forward here, as both armies are just trying to regroup and chase off some scattered units, I'll be sending in some Marauder Spears to push back the Skink Skirmishers and pin down the Star Chamber Guardians, buying more time for the Javelins to return, while my infantry Marauders here are actually eating a Blood Statute, so taking some damage. At the same time, the Lizardmen are sticking close to each other, trying to hold a defensive formation. That gave me a perfect opportunity to drop in a vital transmutation upgraded version onto the Bastillodon, the Slan Mage Priest, and the Star Chamber Guardians. But because I also blocked up my own troops with the Spears, the Skin Wolves, and Throg, I'm also eating an overcast version of Final Transmutation. Searing Doom dropping left, right, and center on both sides, and my infantry suffered quite a bit of damage while the Star Chamber Guardians receiving that Rev Crystal continues to fight on. But Thankfully for me, I still have a unit of Skin Wolves all the way on the other side of the map who is regenerating and just chasing off some routed units. So it is not actually that bad for me right here because Skin Wolves and Throg who ate that upgraded version of Final Transmutation are continuously regenerating while the Slime Mage Priest has to wait for a Rev Crystal healing. Same goes for the rest of the Lizardman unit and the Bastillodon cannot heal itself. So I am getting more and more balance of power as the battle drags on while my skin wolves go off to chase down these tattered skink skirmishers. I'll be doing a bit more of a fast forward here as the skin wolves pull back while the javelins move up to ready and fire. Though at this point the skink skirmishers on the far side have completely shattered, the skin wolves will have to return to the fight in the middle as attacking the skink skirmishers no longer fulfill the attacking rule. So I actually had to throw in my characters for a bit of melee engagement while the javelins chucks in some missiles to fulfill the attacking rule. Skin wolves are moving up as well but here comes a searing doom and the marauder hunters probably will be shattered. Especially with the Searing Doom putting the final nail in their coffin, eliminating the last of my missile troops. All that remains for my damage dealers are the Armored Skin Wolves and Frog, who can be supported by the Shaman Sorcerer with the Plague of Rust. 
I'm trying to move Throck over to fight these skink skirmishers while the skin wolves are buying some time to regenerate. Marauder spears are moving up as well, and the marauders who temporarily returned to the fight has been routed by the sheer presence of the Star Chamber Guardians. Skin wolves piling onto the Bastilodon with Ref Crystal, try just trying to work down this monster here. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem that they are doing too much damage here, as the Star Chamber Guardians are coming in to protect their only source of healing, and the Slamage Priest is also fighting in the mix, getting that 15% physical resistance. Throck has joined the fight though, and he is swinging his massive mace, threatening to bring down the Lizardman Dino. Though he did get knocked down there, so he wasn't able to dish out the damage against the Lizardman monster. Finally, the Skin Wolves are returning back to the fight after spending eternity chasing off routed units. We'll do a bit of fast forward, a final searing doom from my Shaman Sorcerer, chipping away the health of the elite Temple Gods. Now the Skin Wolves are piling into the fight, crushing the Star Chamber Guardians with their charge. The Slamage Priest is trying to move away from Throg, but he also made a lethal mistake of moving away from his own Star Chamber Guardian support. This allows the Armored Skin Wolves to surround him and beat him down with the Anti-Large Bonus plus the Fight or Die buff, juicing up their melee attack. The Skinks try to screen out the Wolves, but the Wolves simply push through. Army losses hit, announcing the defeat of the Children of the Old Ones. himself was able to keep my balance of power intact as they regenerate HP losses while dishing out damage against the Croxagores and the Slam Mage Priest. And also at the same time, I do have my own damage dealing spells. The um, Shaman Saucer of Metal did some pretty spectacular damage by himself. That one final transmutation generated a lot of value, though the Marauder Infantry including the Javelins actually didn't do that much damage value overall and mostly my game was carried by the Skin Wolves and Throg. For the Lizardmen, though, the Star Chamber Guardians almost managed to carry their game, but unfortunately the Bastilodon healing was just not fast enough to keep up with their HP losses, and the Croxagores traded poorly against my Skin Wolves. The Koan mobility got countered hard by my Skin Wolves, and the Skink Skirmishers, while dishing out some pretty decent damage, they were just not doing enough against my armored Skin Wolves, who does have the armor to mitigate a lot of their blow dots. Skink Inventory, they're just chaff, so not much to say about them. And that's it for today's battle. I hope you all enjoyed this multiplayer action, and if you want to see more Total Warhammer 3 content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Tactical Witch, signing out.